Good morning. It's early and I know my hair is sticking up. Y'all remember alfalfa? Well, that's what I feel like today. I even, when I got out of the shower this morning, I um, dried my hair and whatever. But anyway, um, it was sticking straight up. Y'all used to call that baby hair. It's new hair that is coming in and it's as wild as a bucking bronco. And I put me some stuff on it. I got it at the beauty shop. It was called uh, Frizz something. It's supposed to take some of the frizz out of your hair, but I don't think it worked too good. Listen, y'all are always asking me, or the people at the Coddle House it is, they asked me, um, how do you get your sausage casing so soft? Right, here's what I do. No matter what kind of sausage you're buying, a link sausage, no matter what kind you're buying, Put it in a little black skillet. Just pile it up like that and put water over it. I'm going to put on about <clears throat> a half an inch of water. Not much. Just enough uh, to kind of cover the bottom a little bit. Let's see what we got. Pour some of it out. So I, I didn't put much, but here's what you do. When you do this, cover it up good with your foil. And this is going to make your casing real soft. When you uh, cook it on top of the stove, which you got two or three pieces, I reckon you could do that. But I have to cook a lot. So um, I just kind of do like this. And I'm going to cook it on a 400 degree oven for about uh, 35 to 40 minutes. And what happens is that steam comes up in there and it... Um, Soft, cooks the sausage and it softens it all at the same time. Now that's how I do my sausage. And it's real easy because when you put it in the oven like that, it leaves your hands free to do something else, you know, that makes it better. Okay, this morning I'm gonna go over one more time how to make gravy. Some of you said you're still having trouble. All right, here's the, here's the facts. <laughs> Whatever they may be worth to you. I know y'all can't quit looking at my head, I may too. Some of it's static electricity, don't you think? I don't know what to do about it. Yesterday I had on a, I call it a head rag to try to hold my hair down. All right, here's, this is our grits in here. I'm trying to get them started. All right, listen. I have two tablespoons heaping of grease in this skillet. Two tablespoons, okay? Now then. Uh, I've got it turned on high. I'm trying to melt my grease. Now here's what you can do. If you fried chicken, use chicken grease. If you fried sausage, use sausage grease. If you fried, fried fat back or strigoline, use that grease. If you fried, fried bacon, use that grease. If you fried pork chops, use that grease. What I'm saying to you is this. Whatever kind of grease you have to have in your pan, that's the kind of gravy you were making. Now, I'm going to get out a tablespoon. I don't generally measure, but I'm going to do it for you. All right, I'll get one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons. All right, I'm going to put three tablespoons of flour in there, and I'm going to get me a spatula. Now, y'all listen carefully, because this is so easy. Stir it around. If it looks like there's more grease than flour, then put just a little bit more. If it looks kind of right to you, then stop. But I've got two heaping tablespoons. Mine is sausage grease from that sausage that I'm cooking in the oven, but it was yesterday's, okay? All right, now then. Get you a spatula and continue to stir. Now, this looks a little bit on the soupy side to me. So I'm going to put one more tablespoon of, this is plain, or all-purpose flour. All-purpose white lily flour is what I'm using. And I'm going to put one more in there. I'm going to look now. I'm looking, see. I'm looking. It still looks a little bit soupy. See that? I mean, you want it some soupy, but you've got to continually stir it because it will burn. Let me tell you, it will burn. I'm going to put four. So if you're making a good old fried chicken and you want some fried
fried chicken gravy to go in your creamed potatoes or your rice or your noodles or whatever you're fixing. This is the way to do it. That looks right. So I'm going to turn my grits down here. They're about to boil over. Um, so uh, you are going to, I've got two heaping tablespoons of grease and four tablespoons of flour. Now I'm going to stir that around until it gets the brownness that I want. Now you can cook it on lower if you want to, but I'm, I'm always in a hurry, so I cook on high. Just about everything I cook on high. I just stand there and stir it. All right, it's ready. See how it's browned up and it's thick? All right, now I'll take you a glass of water and pour it a little at the time. And, and stop pouring about halfway so you can kind of tell how it's looking, okay? Don't just pour everything in there at once. All right, now I'm gonna get my whisk and I'm gonna get any knots that might happen to exist in there. Okay, now here's where we're gonna differ up. You can, you can, I'm gonna pour that whole glass in there. You can just have it with water. You do not have to have milk. As a matter of fact, sometimes I like it better with just water because you can actually taste the bacon or the sausage or the chicken and whatever you've got in there. I love water gravy. But today, I'm going to make mine a little bit more on the milky side, so I'm going to put milk in mine and let it cook down a little bit. Get these grits stirred, y'all. They're barking. Y'all know what that is? <laughs> All right, so now, see how it's getting thick? That flour's cooking in there. I'm gonna put in a little milk. This is whole milk. Just pour some in. Doesn't matter how much. Doesn't matter. Just pour some in. Get that flavor in there. All right, I'm gonna let this cook down. All right, now we're gonna add salt and pepper. Now, according to what kind of grease you've got in there determines what kind of, how much salt you're gonna put in. In other words, bacon's kind of salty. Fat back is salty. So, you're gonna have to use what God gave you. What is that? The sense of what? What are your five senses? Which one are you fixed to use? Well, I've already used the sense of sight because I'm looking at it, trying to figure out if it's thick enough. You can't add flour now, it's too late. You have to add it at the beginning. What sense are we fixing to use, y'all? Taste. We're fixed to use a sense of taste. Okay, let me do that. I don't have to use my sense of taste on the pepper because I know I want plenty of that in there. That makes it good. So just put you some pepper. And now we are going to put just a little bit of salt and then I'm going to taste it. I'm not going to put much. That's all I'm going to put right there. I'm gonna stir it around, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix the taste it. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna turn it down real low right now. Looks like I might need a little bit more uh, milk in there. I'll get some in a minute. Okay, now we're gonna taste this. We're gonna use our sense of taste and we're gonna see if our gravy is like we like it i'm gonna put just a little more salt and a little more pepper in there because it's not quite enough okay and I'm gonna put a little bit more milk because it's thickening up, so. I want it to be, I don't want it to be thin, but I want it to be uh, not not too thick. You can, do, you can do, judge that for yourself, however you like yours. All right, there it is. That's it. Now, wasn't that easy? Wasn't it easy? All right, my grits over here, I've got them going. You know, grits, they're dried corn. 
they're corn. So I've got it going. I've got a whole stick of butter in there and water and salt. That's all I've got in there. So now that they're all getting thick, I'm either going to have to add water or milk. Well, I'm adding milk. Like that. It's because it needs to cook a long time and it hasn't. Okay. All right, now then I'm going to show you something I always do. I'm fixing to put my gravy in a minute in a bowl. Well, here's my gravy bowl. This bowl is as cold as a wedge. If y'all have heard of that, <laughs> it's cold as a wedge. Uh oh, so I'm going to put, it's a pot, it's pottery. It's old timey pottery. And so I'm going to put this in that uh, in my oven with that sausage until this bowl becomes 400 degrees, just like the oven is. So when I pour my gravy in it, it'll probably sizzle a little bit. And then I'm going to cover it with foil and sit it right back here on this eye. Because this is the eye that the oven heat comes up from, okay? And I'm going to sit it there to keep it warm. That's how I do it. I, I never put food in a cold bowl. I never drink coffee out of a cold cup. And I usually try to warm plates and stuff like that. So I'm going to just stick this in the oven just for just a little bit, maybe three or four minutes or something till it becomes 400 degrees like the oven is. And then um, I'm going to cook my gravy just a little bit longer because that flour in there needs to cook and it's ready. And that's all there is to it. I, I pour it up in a minute. I think our bowl is hot. So I'm just going to get it out. It's a good hot bowl. Hot, hot, hot. Stir our gravy around just a time or two and get it out. Okay, there we go. Good old gravy this morning to go on our biscuits and our whatever else we want to put it on. Mainly biscuits. Okay, let me put this over at the sink. Now what you do now is just get you some foil. I'm saying like, if you're not gonna eat breakfast right that second, this is how to do it, okay? And just cut off a little piece about the size to fit that. Tuck it really good around the lip of that bowl. Now watch what I do now. Put it back here on this eye, because this eye is off, but that oven heat's coming out through it. And I get a thick uh, pot pad. Here's a good thick one. And I just lay it on top of my bowl like that. Make sure it's just on the top and not down on the edge, because you don't want to catch nothing to fire. All right, and that's ready. So, uh, and my grits, they're doing really good. You got to stir those. Looks like they need a little water or milk or something in there. They're getting a little bit on the thick side. Remember when you're cooking grits, you only need a fourth of a cup of dry grits per person. And it they swell up. And you're gonna have to continually add water and or milk water and milk. I wouldn't do it just all in milk. They may scorch worse or get a taste to them. Do it in water and, and the milk. And I've got a whole stick of butter in there. And I've got me some cream cheese. And when this gets done, I'm going to take half of this cream cheese and pinch it off all in there. And it's going to be cream cheese grits. I love grits at nighttime too. Not just at breakfast, but they're so good at night. Yeah, this don't need more water. Let me go get some water. Now, if these were already done, I wouldn't be putting water in it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any more water because they're a nice consistency. That's good. But they're not done. They, they're still a little on the hard side. So I'm going to put some water in there so they can continue to blur it and cook. Okay. We're going to let them cook till. Probably another 30 minutes. I like to let my grits cook a long time because the longer they cook, the creamier they are. All right, there we go. That's it. Um, and that's how you make gravy, and that's how you make grits. Love y'all. Bye-bye.